How y'all are? Today we're meeting with Rudy Boudreaux. That's it. The original Cajun. Who? The original Cajun. <laughs> Better check my birth certificate. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. You might get a little hating on you on that one. That's <laughs> it. <laughs> you know, most people don't Maybe realize. Maybe need some controversy. There. I know, most people, <laughs> my friends in particular, don't realize that I'm a product of World War II. Mm -hmm. My dad was French, my mother was from the Philippines. She was actually a war bride during World War II. Oh, wow. And she could tell you some stories. Was he Japanese in the Philippines thing. with MacArthur? Well, he did drive the landing barges, so he was part of the expedition that were coming back to take wow. over the Philippines. Yeah. yeah. And my, my older sister was actually born there, you know. Yeah. I was born in a hospital, but that was a few years back. Come on. Huh? Yeah. <laughs> well, <laughs> tell the people years. about yourself. I'm sorry. Yeah, go ahead. Tell the people mm -hmm. about yourself and what your career is and the things you've done. Well, well, why we have you here today? <laughs> you know, really and truly, growing up, in a little town called, well, called Homa, Louisiana. You know, yeah. uh, this is back in the 50s and 60s. Well, you know, I didn't experience a lot of the prejudice, uh -huh. but every now and then, because of my complexion, I'd come across something like that, uh -huh. you know? And then one thing that helped me overcome that is I uh, excelled in sports. Mm -hmm. And so, in fact, I actually signed a football scholarship at McNeese University, oh. waiting oh, wow. at 135 weight. Wow. Uh, my style of running was scared, you know. <laughs> but, uh, right, right. But, uh, but when you're way as fast as you can. Huh? Oh man, I tell you, I know because uh, some of those guys. I remember one one practice coach told me I was quarterback in the freshman team. He says, "Look, you could be famous this weekend at practice." I said, "Oh, oh coach, what is it?" He said, "You gonna be playing Roger Stallbach because we're getting ready to play them the next week." You know, he was at Pensacola Navy. Oh, yeah. So, man, I was, man, I got so beat up at practice the next day. I, you remember the movie Rudy? Uh -huh. mm -hmm. Oh, that's exactly how I felt. <laughs> wow. In fact, tying in to that point was um, I was able to um, do background work for seven, ten days in the movie The Apostle with Robert Duvall and yeah. Billy Bob Thornton mm -hmm. and right. Fawcett and sure. um, June Quarter Cash. A great movie. Oh, yeah. I know. I know. Yeah. Met those important. Watch it over. It was interesting to meet some of the people. Sure. Like, for example, uh, I didn't get to meet uh, Farrah Fawcett, but I got to meet her sister. Her name was Leaky. You know who Leaky Foster? <laughs> yeah. Leaky Foster. Leaky yeah, Foster. Guess who Leaky was dating? Olivia oh, Newton John's brother. His name was Porter John. You might have heard of him. <laughs> Porter John. That's <laughs> But now, June Carter Cash was really interesting. But the only thing unusual about it, they always had to keep a heater around there. Uh, heater. I said, why was that? I said, well, they didn't want to have cold cash. <laughs> but um, other than that, um, filming of that movie was really interesting. Uh, I got involved with that. That's the very first movie I was involved in. Um, that's been over like, 20 years ago at least. Um, they were casting for young kids. So I took my daughter, who at that time was about, I think about 10, 11. We stood in line for three hours for registration. And I was trying to register this so other side, well, I might as well do it too. And yeah. so I filled out the information, and lo and behold, I get a call back, which she didn't. Oh, you know, she, uh, you know, she must have been broken up. <clears throat> She, uh, I, I guess he was. Mobile. A little bit, yeah. yeah. I guess to a certain degree, yeah. You almost had to wait as long as day, huh? <laughs> <laughs> wait, you <laughs> laugh. Wait, wait, you laugh. But <laughs> in the very first scene, I mean, my wife finds out later that the dog in the scene was getting paid more than me. <laughs> oh, goodness. The dog from Houston was getting 500 a day, and I was getting $50 a day. Oh, wow. Uh -huh. Yeah, she threatened yeah. to send me to obedience school. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. In fact, every time I pass a fire, I got to hold my right leg down. You know? uh -huh. Oh, so <laughs> what was that like yeah. hanging out with uh, Robert Duvall? Well, uh, originally they called me, they wanted me to work as a stand in for Robert, I guess, because of the uh, thinning of the hair, you know? <laughs> and I didn't know anything about the movie industry, so I said, well, What's a stand in? And she explained to him and all that. She said, But you, you know, always go off camera. When the camera, you know, saw us come on the set, I said, well, I'm going to have a chance to be on camera soon. I said, I said, you got anything else? He said, well, you can work as a background extra. And lo and behold, that's what I did. Mm -hmm. And got great camera time. In fact, I hate to keep rambling on, but uh, mm -hmm. we had this, uh, we went, we'd go to a show, and like one time we went with about 12, 15 of our friends. So we get in the theater, and the guy in our group goes to the front of the theater, it was about three, four, four. May I have your attention, please? I said, what is he doing? He said, you know, Hollywood has their own stars. But Lafayette has their own story. We'd like Rudy Boudreaux to come forward and accept his replica of the Oscar. They had set me up. They had a little picture of an Oscar, I mean, a statue. Best supporting extra in a non speaking role. <laughs> <laughs> so I go to the front. Everybody's clapping. They thought they got Boudreaux. I gave an impromptu acceptance speech. I remember the speech. I had to make it up real quick. Mm -hmm. I'd like to thank all the little people like Tony, Tim, and Tattoo. I thought the only Oscar in life I gave would be Oscar Meyer because I'm so full of baloney, and that's a cold cut. <laughs> but I did it. That was a wild thing. Every time I came on camera, they was like clapping and everything. In fact, at a certain point, I, 
I started to chant. Yeah. 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 That's awesome. And also in that movie, I had the opportunity to meet a co-star. His name was John Beasley. And he actually was one of the Notre Dame coaches in that movie, Rudy. Come on. Oh, yeah. wow. Yeah. So we get, became friends and everything. And um, a couple of years later, he was shooting a movie in Homer called Crazy in Alabama with Melanie Griffin and Antonio Banderas. So I said, I, I called him, got in touch with him, said, John, you like, I know you like to play golf. So I said, I'm going to play golf. And I'm just a hacker. And I accidentally hit a good shot. And just like in the movie, he started going, Rudy, Rudy. I said, I'm glad you got to meet the Rudy movie, John. In fact, when I play golf, I wear two pair of pants. They said, what is that? I said, in case you get a hole in one. <laughs> but anyway, I'm rambling on. What else you got? <laughs> Sorry. You, uh, I know you, you, you said you went to audition with your daughter. Is that how you got into it? Or you always wanted to try your hand at acting? Or, you know, did you act a whole lot to get your wife? Or... <laughs> Yeah, you didn't say much about her taste, right? Yeah, really? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I thought maybe, I thought, I'm just saying, I thought maybe it's because she couldn't see. I mean, I always sure. <laughs> I get into reactions, you know, I've done them over the period, you know, sometimes a couple of uh, movies a year. Mm -hmm. But people call me, get interaction about, you know, they watch the movie, also, you know, just does something about the movie and it, you know, changes the prospect of it, you know. Yeah. yeah. So they would call me. In fact, I had one couple call me from, uh, they watched it. I forgot which movie it was, but from the lobby to see it after though, when they were arguing, that was me. And the other said, no, it wasn't. So they wanted to solve the problem. So they called yeah. me from the theater. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I tell you. But um, it's funny how, as background actors, you, a lot of times you don't get any camera time. You know, you're just mm -hmm. sitting around sure. waiting for your scene to be shot. Right. And every now and then you get a little break. And when you do, sometimes you got to take advantage of that. Yeah. I'll give you an illustration that we did one movie called Left Behind with Nicolas Cage. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So um, they assigned me to sit in this airport cafe at this table. And it was empty and there was no one else in there. So I'm sitting there working on my laptop. Well, it's hard acting intelligent. But anyway, they, uh, Nicolas Cage would come in and sit at the next table and he'd have a conversation with his daughter, her daughter, his daughter's boyfriend, and things like that. We shot that scene for a day and a half. Wow. After we finished the scene, the director came up to me and said, you know, you did pretty good sitting there for a day and a half. I said, well, look, your name and title of your movie fits the role I was playing. He said, what do you mean? He said, well, the title of your movie is Left Behind. Well, for two, a day and a half, I've been sitting in a woodchair. And I said, not only my left behind, but my right behind was numb. <laughs> the director loved it. He said, I'll give you extra camera time for that. And sure enough, he did. <laughs> oh, gosh. Sorry about that, guys. I'm going with stories galore. Uh, what was it about a bicycle you said earlier? Bicycle? <laughs> <laughs> oh, somebody, you know, you, it's funny when you have to tell a joke, it, People say things to do things. It just reminds you of something corny. And I love a good corny joke. So I love to see the reaction of people. Yeah, and it's fun too to see some people. I have people sometimes that call me mm -hmm. at work sometimes and say, uh, "Will you tell me a joke? I feel kind of down in the dumps." That's hard to do. Yeah, you on the spot. Yeah. Anytime when anybody comes up to you, say, "Tell me a joke." And right. Just you know, it's got to yeah. fit into the scheme of things. You know. Yeah. Sure. And it's all about timing too with comedy. You know? Oh yeah, that's why I wear a watch. Yeah. <laughs> that's right. In fact, my great great grandfather used to work at a clock factory. All he did all day was make faces, <laughs> <laughs> and he used to tick them off too. You know. <laughs> well, on that note, we're gonna pause for a second. We'll be right back. We're back talking with Rudy Boudreaux. So, Rudy, you're gonna tell us how you uh, got started in in, uh, in acting and, and doing those things. I know you told us that you took your daughter to an audition and signed up yourself, but uh, is it something you always wanted to do, or uh, just spur of the moment? Just something that came up all of a sudden. And you know, at that time, they were, they started the tax credits for the movie industry, mm -hmm. the state of Louisiana, and that brought in a lot of opportunities. A lot of a lot of sure. movies were being shot, and they were building facilities for production and things sure. of that sort. And it was all new to me. And plus, we were non-union, so right to work state. So of course, they can pay us extra, less price, less money, oh, wow. save a lot yeah. of my budget too. So yeah. Yeah. Hmm. yeah. Was there any other outside interest besides acting, or anything you pursue or like to do? I know you can't tell right now, but I do like to work out at the health club. Oh right? wow! Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, And then every now and then, I kind of. I, must, I know I'm not getting famous, but I must be getting close because instead of the paparazzi following me, every now and then I see the mama you know? <laughs> you know, The mama like, Yeah, instead of the papas. Yeah. yeah. Well, you hear the police. I mean, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> they're coming for you. Yeah. I know, I know. That's okay. I got my Fire truck's coming to put you out. You're getting too hot. <laughs> That's okay. That's why I got my cell phone in case I go to prison. I was having right. fun. <laughs> <laughs> just for everybody to know that there's a parade going on this is Mardi Gras season so Mardi Gras. If, if you do hear that that's why yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, it's carnival season for us and you told us you were in a hospital earlier you said oh <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's uh, it's in fact my mother when they were coming back after the war I was telling you about the war she was a war bride it took them almost three months to cross the Pacific by ship 
can you imagine? And she was pregnant. And uh, wow. the come delivery time in those days, it's 1949, the doctor was late, so my dad and the nurse actually delivered the baby. And then when they wow. got the baby out, they said, oh, oh, here come another one. <laughs> and so it was a set of twin boys that were delivered. They had to actually deliver them. You know, those days they didn't have ultrasounds, you know. Yeah. Right. Uh, yeah. Yeah. yeah, so that was very interesting. Wow. Wow. Yeah. Twin boys. Yeah, in fact, my mother had another set of twin girls, too. I said oh. twin girls later. I was one of nine. Nine. Yeah, she was four foot ten, weighed 98 pounds. You know? <laughs> I tell you, in fact, I was taller than my mom, mom when I was born, you know? Yeah. Oh. So what was it like growing up with you at home? <laughs> my poor older sister, she had to live with me. I had a brother that was 13 months younger than me. And so she took care, you know, we used to do a lot of tricks and things on her. She, you know, which she she was good about it. In fact, it took me to the age of 13 before I could beat in my right arm and arm wrestling, you know? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's your right arm? Yeah, just right arm. <laughs> <laughs> Right she still had you with the left? Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, because yeah. I'm using the left arm. In fact, I went to the doctor the other day. That arm was hurting real bad. He said, I had, I had almost left. I said, then this arm was off right to us, you know? So. <laughs> Sorry you set me up for that. I did. I sure did. <laughs> How many years have you been doing this, Ruth? Off and on, about 20 plus years. Mm -hmm. You know, I actually had a job as a purchasing manager at oil and gas company in corporate office. And, uh, and so it was hard to fit it in between because, you know, you get a call. You know, you, you you fit, you know, a lot of times the background, you got to fit what they're looking for, whether it be the complexion, the hair, the yeah, age, sure. you know, things like that. And the older I get, the less the opportunities I get, too. Mm -hmm. But I can fit for multiple ethnic groups. And I can go Spanish, Filipino, Italian, you know, even light-complected black and things like that, too. Mm -hmm. so. What is your most memorable experience in the movie business? Getting paid. <laughs> that's a good one. Yeah, I know. Maybe that's why I haven't had a memorable experience. Either. Really? Huh? We were thinking about that the other oh, day. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Remember June Cold Cash? That cold cash we talked about. That's right. Yeah. 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 No, but I find that uh, doing TV commercials pay better than mm -hmm. doing background work. You know, sure. And plus, you don't have to put in as many hours. You, know, you right. do that a day, half a yeah. day, things like that. Uh, I've done several TV commercials. In particular, I've done some for Blue Cross Blue Shield. Mm -hmm. The, the latest I did was Blue Cross Blue Sheet for the state of Mississippi. And they started showing that on the Super Bowl commercial. Not this last one, but the one before. So it's been running almost a year. Mm -hmm. Of course, what they do, they do a buyout so they can use it anytime they want, you know. Yeah. Pay, right. pay just a day rate. Right. Um, yeah. And there I played an Asian grandfather teaching his two Asian, Asian kids yoga. Mm -hmm. They had a yoga instructor on the set trying to teach me all that stuff. I said, girl, you're crazy. <laughs> teach me something simple. In fact, I was sore for two days. <laughs> What? I did my first kissing scene. Kiss. I just kissed my granddaughter on the forehead. Oh. <laughs> yeah. I was scared my wife might be jealous, but she dealt with it. Okay. She dealt with it good. Yeah. 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 Well, being from home, I know you probably like to eat some Louisiana food. Yeah. yeah. My dad, growing up, had a seafood restaurant, so uh, that worked out pretty good. In high school, you know, you take your date out, you know, that big shot. Go, oh, I'm going to go to this restaurant. Order what you want, you know. Yeah. Until they start realizing, hey, that waitress kind of looks like it. And it was my sister, you know. Yeah. And then you can you you think my sister wanted me to give them a tip. I said, girl, go talk to your mama. <laughs> <laughs> what was your favorite Louisiana dish? Um, well it, it just shrimp fixed any fixed any kind of ways, you know. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because I like to deal with ball shrimp then I like ball coffees, but it's it's not as messy. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. Well you're an apostle and apostle is more of a kind of a faith based mm -hmm. movie or whatnot. Mm -hmm. That has your faith directed you in uh in that career move or trying to it did come into play on several incidents um uh, you know because a lot of times you know I, I shy away i stay away from nudity type stuff yeah. and even i started getting uh, calls for tv commercials like the one of them said look we'll pay you 500 a day plus two days hotel if you do act like you went in at the casino i said look. i said look i don't mind people gambling that's not my passion judgment i said but i just don't feel comfortable doing it so yeah. i passed so the next week they call you for a one-day job for a casino. I'm not gonna mention the name. Mm -hmm. We'll pay you 900 a day for the day, acting like you're winning. And I had to turn that down too, because it's hard to turn down near the dollars, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I remember one time we did a movie. Uh, there was a movie called the Get Hard with Will Ferrell. <clears throat> so I signed up to work seven days as a gardener. Okay. And the head of the garden, there's two. We were the two laborers, and then one guy that was the one that had to speak on the music or so. But we we were supposed to be cutting grass and we were trimming hedges and there's this big window this big fancy hotel and Will Ferrell was going to be nude in it hmm. 
And I said, oh gosh, how am I going to get out of this? Because I signed up for seven days. And they didn't tell me beforehand. So eventually I talked the lady out, out of it. So I, I backed out of it. So I didn't have to participate, yeah. you know, just, just don't feel comfortable. Wow. Yeah. That's uh, when you, your, your personal interests cross with professional interests, and that's hard to handle a lot of times mm -hmm. you know, with, with people. With, it's a lot of blessed decisions. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Can't miss it yet. No, no, let's see. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm not complaining. I would, I would change anything that I've done in life so far. Sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Man. So yeah. anything coming up that you know about, or are you just waiting by the phone? There's some stuff that's possible in the background. Yeah. With everybody might out of Dallas. Uh, I'm not at liberty right now because yeah. it's yeah. a year away from the project. Mm -hmm. and, sure. Um, it's in the beginning phases, but it's, it's starting to get. Um, and it deals with uh, living presidents, mm -hmm. actually living presidents. Okay. Yeah, so. well, I know you did a pilot some time ago uh, well, showing down. Is that off the same thing? Can you talk about that? Or you... Well, what happened on that deal is uh, we shot the trailer, mm -hmm. you know, and it was kind of hard. Everybody moving around that many people in one little trailer. You know? yeah. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. I'm a trailer. Okay. Okay, yeah. But um, I mean, that never got off the ground because, simply because they hadn't got funding for it. Yeah, sure. But there's a potential for that, too, next year if this other project works out to have the funds to uh, fund it himself. Mm -hmm. But I, I don't count on it till mm -hmm. sign on the dotted line. You know? That's it. Mm -hmm. And the money's in the bank. Any it's, other uh, up and coming Boudreaux that may uh, be in the film business? or? No, I don't think so. None of them, you know, I, we had four children. They're all professionals in the scientific field. Mm -hmm. In the financial field, doing rather well. They make more money than dad now, you know. Mm -hmm. You know. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'll tell you. But um, mm -hmm. you got a, a father-in-law shack for you out back, or you want the one in San Diego is building one currently. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so we have to, you know. Yeah. Yeah, it's a possibility there, you know. Uh, awesome. But, uh, well, we're gonna take a pause for a call, so we can all just hang out like a hair in a biscuit. We'll be right back. Yeah, because. We're back talking with Rudy Boudreaux. So, Rudy, uh, I heard you played quarterback at uh, South Terrebonne High School. Oh, that was a long time ago, I tell you. In fact, uh, you know, the uh, back in those days, we had leather helmets and no face masks. No, no, that's not true. Doesn't go back that far. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Sometimes I wonder why, because really, you know, you see. I was wondering why your face looked that way. <laughs> <laughs> that's when I went to the doctor, asked for a second opinion. He said, "Okay, you're ugly too." But anyway, <laughs> right, right. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, yeah, that, that's what led to eventually, like I said, si signing a football scholarship at McNeese as a freshman, weighing in at one thirty-five, which I told you. By the way, they had me weighing one eighty-five on the roster. Oh, okay. When I told the coach it was a typographical mistake, he said, but "Don't worry about it." So they left it at one eighty-five. <laughs> <laughs> so. You said they moved you to tailback from quarterback? Well, it must have been tailback because they coach you to elevate. Boy, get your tailback on the bench. <laughs> Did so good at tailback, he put me left out. Right. right, right. <laughs> what I coach, I used to tell kids, they would come up and say, Coach, can I play quarterback? I said, No, I got a special position for you. They would say, What was that? I said, You can play left end and tackle. Left end and tackle? I said, Yeah, you're going to sit on the left end of the bench and tackle anybody that tries to get to the water jug. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. How did we ever get on this subject, guy? <laughs> <laughs> Oh. So you, you have any more experience in the movie in the movie business? Today? Funny you should mention that. Yeah. It's like you're reading my mind right now. Wow, I'm wondering. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, because you I always just store that data in the recesses of my mind because that's one of my favorite subjects in school was recess. But anyway, <laughs> you know, one of the movies I remember was a Disney movie called Pride, with starring Bernie Mac, Tom Arnold, and Terrence Howard. They called me. They said we want you to work as a losing white swim coach. I said, Oh, I can be a loser. I said, You sure I'm white enough for my complexion? I said, Oh yeah. And uh, she said, you have a coach swimming? I said, funny you should mention. I said, just last week, I taught my Labrador retriever how to do the dog paddle. I said, I'm a pet chicken had trouble with the breaststroke. I said, by the way, do I have to wear Speedos? She said, I'm going to probably wear Speedos. I said, well, I just want to let you know up front. Last time I went to the beach and wore my Speedos, when they lifted, put, left, they put up a Speedo on the sign. <laughs> then they wanted to give me a ticket for being topless. That wasn't the worst part. They called the hazmat team. They said, I put a ring around the beach. Yeah. <laughs> so you never know what kind of incident you run into, you know. You're right. Yeah. yeah. You just never but um, I remember uh, one movie we did called Escape Plan with Arnold Schwarzenegger and sure, Sylvester yeah. Stallone. No, that those that was actually a lot of those scenes were shot at NASA facility in Chalmette. Okay. I remember because we had to get clearance and everything and just get a badge to go into the facility. Sure. But uh, it was about a futuristic prison, and uh, I was part of the Asian gang. Looked right. tough, huh? Oh yeah. yeah. In fact, uh, one time they had this prison riot. Under the table, I'm not getting involved with that thing. Yeah. But it was funny. Arnold Schwarzenegger, said, you know, they never did any fight scenes. It was right. they standing, uh -huh. you know, they sure. were standing. Stunt guys, yeah. Stunt guys, yeah. yeah. I, I thought about being a stunt guy, but 
I could my roof would kind of stun it. But anyway, that didn't work out. <laughs> right. Yeah. But they also had it was interesting when you walked into the, the facility. They had a replica of the uh, fuel uh, system that the Challenger had that caused the explosion over That's the, right. over yeah. the rubber field. And that was in That thing was about like two stories tall. Okay. I couldn't imagine once it's full just to get it up. Yes, they made it there. Yeah, I know. Yeah. And it's, that was interesting too. Sure. Everything. So, but um, one other incident was uh, I remember a lot of movies. Sometimes we get involved in you know, sci-fi movies. You know, like we did Swamp Shark uh -huh. down here in Henderson. And we did yeah. That. But uh, one of them we did was called in Shreveport, uh, the town that dreaded sundown. And the lady in back of me was talking. She was a co-star. She had it was at a town meeting, and she was talking it for the meet, uh, the scene. And after it was over, I started talking to her. She was a really interesting person. In fact, she actually co-starred in the movie The Birds by Alfred Hitchcock. Yeah, Remember that movie. Mm -hmm. Yes. And she told me interesting stuff about Alfred Hitchcock. Said he was the most unusual, weird person. You know, mm -hmm. sure. eccentric. Yes, yeah. and maybe eccentric. that's another word. Yeah. Hope, hope they don't get only for saying you know, <laughs> using those descriptions. Oh well. You know. Well, that's okay. Yeah, yeah. That's, it's our show. Go ahead. It's, it's, your, it's a no <laughs> politics frame. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we don't care what they say. But you know, you know, as a, a background actor, you know, you try to well, you you just take your chances if you're gonna be uh -huh. on camera or not. I finally get on sure. camera, and one day it was a short film called From Heaven, which I love, but a Christian film. Like the surgeon in an operating room. Okay, remember mask, hat, you know. I mean, all they see is your eyes, huh? Yeah. You know, you tell your friends, that's me, that's me. They say, sure, sure. Yeah. But I, me I remember one scene, I got to do the action scene, and it came, it came out by accident. We were operating, and the head surgeon was on one side of the patient, I was on the other. And by the way, there was no body there anyway. They added it later. Mm -hmm. And I was watching the monitor, and the guy flatlines. He was supposed to flatline, okay? And I look at the head surgeon, and I go, and that wasn't in the script. So the director after it was always said, oh, you did a great job for the action scene. He said, we'll keep it in there. So what are you talking about? He said, when you shook your head, you know, <laughs> and they kept it in the scene. You know, can you imagine that? Oh, wow. Little things like that. Yeah, yeah they, they let a lot of ad living go on. Oh, I know, I know. Or they they um, cut and dry about. Well, you know, a lot of times in some of those movies, uh, you, they, they allow the actors um, not necessarily stick to the script, but they, they can add it as long as it's in the scope of what they want to do. Yeah. The word, it don't have to be the exact words. Yeah. Sure. I always wonder about that. Yeah, I mean, when you look in movies and how much how much of that is actually you know, scripted to the T, or if if actors kind of play off of stuff and, and go their own direction. I think it depends on the actor. You know, like Robin Williams, he would he would ad lib a lot of times. Oh yeah, you know, yeah. You know, but uh, the, most of your script supervisors that I know of, they want to stay to the script. You know, and yeah. the directors, yes, they the do. Writers, but like you said, it depends on the talent. You know, yeah. I mean, it really does. One of the interesting, two interesting people I met was I did three episodes of the new Dallas show, you know, dealing with the sure. kids of the Ewing family. Mm -hmm. Got to meet up uh, in one scene and got to visit with Patrick Duffy mm -hmm. and Linda Gray. Now, Linda Gray was good for being in the 70s, so 70 years old. Yeah. In fact, she told me an interesting story. She said that, remember the movie Dustin Hoffman was in called The Graduate with mm -hmm. Dan Bancroft? Yeah, sure. Well, the poster for that movie has Dustin Hoffman in the background and a set of legs in the air, and you know, that was the poster. Yeah. Everybody thought it was Anne Bancroft's legs, but they were really Linda Gray's legs because that was when she was just you know, coming up in the stuff. In fact, she said she got paid twenty-five dollars for that scene. Wow! So, twenty-five dollars. Yeah, so, you know, in the in the movie industry, you can do modeling, you know, substitute work for legs, rears, hands. You know, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. 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 They never used any of my body yet. <laughs> <laughs> Even though the other day I was in front of the mirror, my wife was teasing me, so I took off my shirt and I flexed. So I said, this body's a weapon, huh? She looks at me and said, what, a stink bomb? <laughs> <laughs> no respect. Yeah, yeah. And I was telling her that she wanted me to get in shape, so she put me in a new running routine. I got home from work that day. She told me to go take a hike. <laughs> then the worst part about it, I had to quit working on my abs because she started calling me abnormal. <laughs> <laughs> well, anyway, I'm sorry. I'm getting off script. It's okay. Just keep. Rolling. Where'd you get all that quickness from, man? Yeah. I mean, did, did, do you practice this, or did, did, this is normally who you are? It's funny how that is. People say things or do things, and it's like it's a curse and blessing. All of a sudden, things in your mind start popping. It brings up corny types of. I love the corny type of material. Yeah. Yeah. I love to see sure. people's faces when, it, especially my wife. Uh, when I say corny. Have you done stand up? You should be doing. No, I got very close veins. Okay. Yeah. 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 Plus, I'm kind of shy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, as Hoyt knows from the past yeah. Yeah. experiences. Huh? <laughs> yeah. uh, you said you and Becky have been married 47 and a half years. 47 and a half. Oh, gosh, I know. And then we had four children. Um, one in this past May got married uh, in, outside of Aruba on the island of Bonaire. Mm 
Yeah. One a few years back got married in Portugal. That was a, a really good experience. All, all, all the weddings there, you know. Sure. Uh, um, of course, I had to work a little longer, but I mean, to pay for it, you know, <laughs> to fund it. Yeah. Yeah. But it was, it was fun, you know. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, well, I, that's, I know that's a long time for her to put up with you. And, uh, yeah, but she's got me trained now. So she got you trained. Oh, yeah. Except the other day, I put my foot down. I told her, I said, look, yes, ma'am. And I did it. Y'all <laughs> <laughs> well, just hang out. We'll be back, back in a little bit. We'll be back with Rudy Boudreau. He was telling us about his family tree. You did some research? Yeah, I found out my family tree that I was the sap. <laughs> <laughs> and I did it pretty quick, so they called me ASAP, you know. <laughs> no, I'm sorry, I'm just teasing. We had a, our family tree with the name Boudreau. Mm -hmm. Oh, our family tree took up a whole forest. <laughs> My brother claimed that our family tree was a nut tree, but I don't know about that. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, you got any other yeah. interesting stories for us? Really? Yeah, I got a couple right? more because I know y'all getting bored and your audience is probably saying, when are you going to get that guy off the air? Oh, uh, no way. I know. But anyway, we, well, at least the air, I was full of hot air. But anyway, <laughs> the... Um, I remember one movie we did was called Olympus Has Fallen with Gerard Butler. It was sure. about a North Korean takeover of the White House. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, I knew I wasn't going to get much camera time because I played multiple roles in there. I played an Asian tourist running away when the fight, fighting started. I played a dead American Marine on the White House lawn, face down, full dress uniform with a wool coat. Mm -hmm. We were shooting this in Shreveport in August. Now it was 100 degrees. Oh, wow, yeah. And it had fires going on. And um, it was so hot that you know, the, even some of the North, Com well, North Korean, uh, no, where are they from? Yeah, North Korean, yeah. Uh, commandos were pa actually passing out. They had to keep you pretty well hydrated. Oh, wow. Yeah. I remember laying down. You shoot the scenes multiple times. I had to put earplugs in my ear because of the concussions. They kept killing me and everything, you know. So yeah. it, was, it was pretty interesting to do that. But it was, you know, wow. you never know. You know, they had a, the replica of the White House looked pretty real to me. Sure. In yeah. Yeah. It was really good. Yeah. 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 It's amazing what they can do. <laughs> oh, I know, I know. And then uh, another incident, I played a, uh, it was a movie called The Butler. It's about mm -hmm. a butler that Forrest, uh, yeah, Whitaker, yeah, you know, Olympia, uh, oh, Oprah Winfrey. Mm -hmm. Listen to this, I played a four-star Air Force general on Reagan's chief of staff. Yeah. And we had this fancy deal and everything, and we shoot the scene, and in between the scenes, um, I was just talking to this young girl sitting down, and she looked, they had her looking like Nancy Reagan for the procedure. And so I talked to her a few minutes, and then walked away. The guy said, you know who you were talking to? I said, no. I said, it was Jane Fonda. Oh, wow. I mean, well, I don't like her because what she did for being you know, the Vietnam yeah, yeah. but um, yeah. you know but they had a she really looked like Nancy Reagan hmm. uh, yeah. that's interesting so that's we're going to have to have, have you back with a comedian friend of ours that came the other day yeah we'll, we'll yeah. think of some skits we'll all oh, no. like yeah, we need to pair you up with Jerry yeah. Giller you know? yeah. uh, it's God's fault they talk, talk about it. every now and then someone says you're, you know, you're funny I said it was God's fault he gave you two funny things <laughs> <laughs> he's screwing over you caged him well I gotta look at, I'm caged too so. oh, okay yeah, yeah. yeah. So we right. can enjoy, well, I enjoyed it. I enjoyed the visiting. I appreciate y'all inviting me. Hope you want to come back. Thanks, Rudy. Anytime. Well, based on what I get paid for this, you know, I, in lieu of pay, I'll take that call. I told you. <laughs> <laughs> Next time we'll cook something for you. How's oh, it? thank you. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, I'll have that car waiting for you. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm Hoyt. And I'm Corey. And this is Rudy Headnall. Y'all have a great day. Thank you for watching.